let's play a game. Three questions or less. Hey, Benny. What's up with the top hat? Hey, Benny, the person you're about to talk about, did they make the Les Paul famous? Hey, Benny, is that a Slash guitar? It's Slash's actual guitar. That's right. I'm gonna go to the case and show you afterwards so there's a lot of fun candy in there. This is a Slash custom shop, Vermilion Brazilian. Say that five times fast. Vermilion Brazilian, Vermilion Brazilian. And then Slash shows up. Hey buddy, thanks. So what is this exactly? Let's take a look. There are dings and dings all over this thing. How do you know it's actually Slash's guitar, Benny? Hey, see that, what does that say? Brazilian Vermilion Proto number two. Slash. And if you look at the side, it was his second guitar in the rack, and this is where he put all of his picks. You might ask yourself, Benny, what's up with the tape right here? I'm gonna give you some insider information, some slash tone advice. If you have a pacemaker, let's say like slash, and you hold your guitar right next to your heart, you can get noise through your electronics. That's right, slash, literally. Puts tape on the back of all of his guitars because his pacemaker fucks his tone. So you may recognize this because they came out with the normal version of the Vermilion. Indicative of this beautiful, beautiful, orangey, bloody, into blackness that just screams, Slash! 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 Caca! Slash! Vermilion! Every one of these scratches represents a moment where Slash was just Rocking it! I'm going against everything Jeremy Piven taught me in the movie PCU. You never wear the shirt of the band you're gonna go see! But I'm wearing Slash, or Will the Thinker, for Use Your Illusion 2, which by the way was an unbelievable album despite being a huge departure from Appetite and Lies. But I have to get a little bit personal here because I love the Les Paul guitar. I love it. Like when you say, cookies, love, pizza, love, Slash. Because when I was younger, I remember watching MTV and seeing this guy with a top hat and crazy hair and a nose ring and rings on every single freaking finger doing his thing and rocking. In particular, I remember being sick one day from school and watching MTV play the 1988 Ritz performance of Guns N' Roses where Axel jumps off the stage and tries to kill a fan. What does Slash do? He lights another cigarette. He's just sitting there. He's just rocking and rolling. Izzy's f***ing a chick. Duff's watching, laughing at the girl that Izzy's f***ing on the side because it was Guns N' Roses. Steven Adler was back there railing lines. Like, it didn't matter. They were the most dangerous band in the world. If you wanted to be Slash's guitar tech, all you had to do was be able to lift his dead body so you could get him home if he was too wasted to walk for himself. I say that that's thinking. And to think, that's actually a need. Instead of a wheelchair, I'll get a guitar tech. Guns N' Roses. They bowed to no one. Not even themselves. I mean, they incited riots. James Hetfield went up in flames. Did they go on stage? No. And that's rock and roll. But the thing that I love so much about Slash is his incredible ability to melt faces with his super melodic, yet shreddy, yet bluesy, yet slightly mixolydian modal guitar playing. Slash had a style that sounds like nobody. You don't need to even know his name, which isn't even a name. It's technically a form of syntax. Slash, you can recognize him from his top hat behind the curtain. Do you know where you are? You're in the polo cave, baby. You're gonna do you know who it is. This was $700 spent really bad. Don't melatonin an Amazon. I remember seeing him stand on top of a Steinway piano in the middle of November rain, just playing after he threw his 59 up in the air in the middle of the desert. Maybe it was a 58, didn't have that nice of a top. I don't know what it was, but he threw it up. There's a helicopter. In another video, he drives off a cliff with a chick. It's crazy, he blows up. I mean, how much cooler do you want this guy to be? He's basically Spawn. 
except Slash. Not only is he one of the greatest composers, riff meisters, shredders, and I don't even want to denote him as a shredder because he writes awesome songs. So a lot of the times people conflate shredding with being a good songwriter or just an overall great guitarist, whereas shredding is a technical thing for me. And everyone knows every single note to every one of his songs. He plays them all differently every single night and still makes it sound like Slash. And it's like, you know, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, you know, the toxic twins thing, Axel and Slash were like, hold my beer and my black tar heroin. Here come the 90s, live and let die. I knew that Slash was my favorite live guitarist when I went and saw him the other year at Fenway Park in Boston. Comes out on stage, plays Welcome to the Jungle, Out to Get Me, Night Train, I think pretty tied up. A bunch of hits! And I remember looking over at my fiance and saying, this isn't as good as I remember the last time. But the thing that's great about Guns N' Roses and Slash, they don't play backing tracks. They're a real band that coalesce, live, breathe, eat, and sleep. Could be great one day, terrible the other day. They come on stage, rock through all these hits. They're okay. But eight minutes into coma, din -in, din -in, din -in -in, a 10 minute song off the Use Your Illusions set. All of a sudden the magic just happens that you only get with truly amazing live bands. When it's just, they all look each other in the eyes and all that warming up just clicks and you hit hyperdrive. And then for the next three hours and 39 minutes, they blew my mind. Because Axel before the show was like, hey Slash, how long did Bruce Springsteen play last night? Oh, three hours and 17 minutes? Let's add a strange and civil war to the end of the already 34 song set. And that's the thing, they can play for 30 minutes and still be like, meh, and then play for three hours and be the greatest band ever. And the thing that's crazy, I'll start off by saying I miss Izzy, okay? But if you can't have Izzy straddling, get first off, the guy that kind of looks like him, Richard Fortas, talk about casting, but Richard, oh my God, what an amazing player that guy is. All of a sudden, they're covering the beautiful soundscape of Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. And I see this guy come out with his Scala guitar and these amazing sounds are coming out. And it's not Slash, he's doing all these crazy techniques and all these sort of things and it's like, how could you get better than this? And then Slash plays and you're like, oh, it's the X factor you get when you're a legend, like Slash, and you just have a swagger. All you need is your silhouette against the screen, and everybody knows and cheers. So what's up with this guitar? Why didn't they make it? Brazilian rosewood, for those that don't know, has been critically endangered since 1966, and you can't really get it that much. So this one never saw the light of day. The only people that I'm aware that have this guitar are Puma and Cesar. You know, the guy that owns Gibson. The dude that succeeded Henry VIII didn't chop off anybody's heads, but instead said, let there be rock and roll. So what do I do when I think of this guitar? How do I feel when I know that these strings are the actual strings that touch Slash's fingers? It's like going to the promised land. It's like 40 years in the desert, nothing but mana, mana, mana. And then over the dunes, you see one Vermilion Les Paul sticking out and you know, Rock and roll has been saved. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already? Vermilion Proto number two. Brazilian Vermilion. As owned by Slash. Oh, there she is. This is Slash's actual case. His actual case candy. We have some Guns N' Roses picks. Game use picks. Taw's not much like this, but Slash is clearly. I always take off the pick guard. I want to see that sexy, sexy vermilion burst. And I'm so glad that Todd didn't decide to go rogue and put this back on himself. And if you had any question at all, you're just not going to see another one of these because they don't exist. Thanks, Slash.